this know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. Welcome to another Prophecy Update. Today we will continue on our subject as it was in the days of Noah. Last week, I referenced Jeremiah chapter 16 because I believe that that prophecy given to the children of Israel has a direct correlation with the United States of America. I want to read it again. For thus saith the Lord, verse 5, Enter not into the house of mourning, neither go to lament, nor bemoan them, for I have taken away my peace from this people, saith the Lord, even loving kindnesses and mercies. Both the great and the small shall die in this land. They shall not be buried. That is a most severe prophetic statement of future judgment. They will die in that land, and they won't even have the dignity of a proper burial. Neither shall men lament for them, nor cut themselves, nor make themselves bald for them. Neither shall men tear themselves for them in mourning to comfort them for the dead. Neither shall men give them the cup of consolation to drink for their father or for their mother. Thou shalt not go also into the house of feasting to sit with them, to eat and to drink. For thus saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will cause to cease out of this place in your eyes and in your days the voice of myrrh and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. I see here a reminiscence of the days of Noah. They were eating, drinking given in marriage until Noah entered into the ark and then the flood came. Interestingly enough, once again, a reference is made of the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. And God says, that is coming to an abrupt end. Verse 10, And it shall come to pass when thou shalt show this people all these words, and they shall say unto thee, Wherefore hath the Lord pronounced all this great evil against us? Or what is our iniquity? Or what is our sin that we have committed against the Lord our God? Then thou shalt say unto them, Because your fathers have forsaken me, saith the Lord, and have walked after other gods, and served them, and have worshipped them, and have forsaken me, and have not kept my law. Verse 12, and you have done worse than your fathers. And you have done worse than your fathers. The Lord wants this people to know. For behold, you walk everyone after the imagination of his evil heart, that they may not hearken unto me. Our nation today, is not the same nation that I personally grew up in. So I, again, hold the position that there is at least an inference to the United States in this portion of prophetic holy writ. I recognize that for this reason. There are only two nations that claim to be formed under God. No other nations. That of Israel and that of the United States of America. Look at your dollar bill and I state my case. In God we trust. Now keep this portion of scripture in mind and we're going to go to a common theme for Christmas. A passage of scripture that we are all familiar with and hear much about during this special time of the year. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Verse 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise, and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. 
verse 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The increase of his government shall be peace. There shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord will perform it. And so again, we see a common portion of scripture regarding the incarnation. This prophecy has two components to it. The first is the incarnation. It is a prophetic word about the word of God, which would and has become flesh. God sent forth his son. In the fullness of time. Born of a virgin. But there's a second component to this prophecy. One that I firmly believe relates to the portion of scripture today. We are looking at Jeremiah 16. And it deals with the second coming. And it is a reference that actually starts its manifestation in Zechariah chapter 14. There we see the word of God, the son of God, coming back to the earth and sets his feet upon the Mount of Olives. Reading in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 4, And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a great valley, and half of the mountain shall be removed toward the north, and the half of it toward the south. And you shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azel. Yea, ye shall flee, like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and the Lord my God shall come, and all his saints with thee. So now we see a rescue mission on the part of the Son of God, who is about to establish that world government upon his shoulders. But before he sets his feet upon the Mount of Olives, a period of seven years will commence. It will be, by and large, a period of seven years that will be hell on earth. Now, going over to verse 5, again in Jeremiah, we read in terms of the prophecy, the severity, God says, I have taken my peace away from this people. They will not live, will die in the streets, will not even have the dignity of a proper burial. I will put an end to their feasting because they have forsaken me, their fathers, and you, the Lord says, you have done even worse. Now let's go to the correlation between Jeremiah chapter 16 and Isaiah chapter 9, where we read the prophetic reference to the coming of the Lord in two separate components. Again, verse 6 states, For unto us a child is born, etc. But going on down to verse 8, Isaiah chapter 9, we see something amazing here. In the year 2000, we experience a national tragedy. On 9-11, September 11th, 9-1-1, many 
have looked at that time as the beginning of the judgment of God upon this nation. There were books written, sermons preached. David Wilkerson preached on the subject of the United States in relationship to Isaiah chapter 9. Jonathan Kahn also spoke of that 9-11 event as a harbinger I had a very strong sense that this year was going to be a year of shaking, 2020. I told people that, I spoke publicly, and that I had to write this book because this is going to be the resuming of the mystery of the harbinger, the shakings that are coming upon America. And I had to write this because this is where it is. And the, the template that we, I spoke first time I came there, and it was, it was on the day like it's on the day today. Uh, but all, but the, the ultimate thing was that there is first the, the template of judgment is there is a, a shaking, of, uh, there is a, an attack on the land. This is a biblical template, happened with America with 9-11. Then there is a window of time that the nation's given, years, to come back to God and or head to judgment. And if it doesn't come back, then the shakings continue. And one of the things, Pat, when I look back at, uh, you know, at the harbinger, the original, uh, it actually speaks about uh, the the shakings that are going to come, and also even the timing that it was to be. This is the time. 2020 is even there. And if we have time, I will share about why it had to be now. And the thing is that you know there is this there there is this uh, a, a moment that we're in right now that is very very crucial. So now I want to read in verse eight of Isaiah nine, where these two brethren and others drew a similar relevance of the prophecy to the United States. Verse 8, Isaiah 9. The Lord sent a word into Jacob, and it hath lighted upon Israel. And all the people shall know, even Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, that say in the pride and stoutness of the heart, the bricks are fallen down, but we will build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. Verse 11. Therefore, the Lord shall set up the adversaries of resin against him and join his enemies together. The Syrians before and the Philistines behind, and they shall devour Israel with open mouth. For all this his anger is turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Verse 13, For the people turneth not unto him that smiteth them, neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. There was no repentance then, in the year 2000, 9-11. There is no repentance now. We have forgotten the warnings. And this nation has fallen into such debauchery that from that point to this day, it can hardly be recognized. Some believe that the United States is woefully referenced in Babylon itself, the fall of Babylon. In Revelation, we read there, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she hath made all nations to drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. By the way, much is being said these days about that mark and how we as a people are being programmed the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. And so Isaiah chapter 9 tells us about a people who in experiencing the 
wrath of God, instead of repenting, instead of returning unto the Lord, crying out with mourning and sorrow and asking God for forgiveness, they become stout in their hearts. They become proud. They become arrogant. And though the bricks are fallen because of the judgment of God, they declare, we will build again. But there is a passage in the Bible from Isaiah that I think speaks to all of us at times like this. The bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with dressed stone. The fig trees have been felled, but we will replace them with cedars. That is what we will do. We will rebuild and we will recover. The people of America will stand strong together because the people of America have always stood together. We will build bigger, better, stronger, and they lose sight of the very person who is communicating to them in love, seeking to warn them of consequences that will surely come should they continue to reject the fountain of life. And so Isaiah goes on to say in verse 14, Isaiah 9 verse 14, the Lord will cut off from Israel, head and tail, branch and rush, and one day, the ancient and honorable, he is the head, and the prophet that teacheth lies, he is the tail. I might say, at least in part, there is no repentance in this nation because there are few prophets that stand up and proclaim the righteousness and the holiness of God. They do not call for repentance. So many of them speak peace when there is no peace. They prophesy better times when God is prophesying, woe, woe, woe. And so I see we as a people, as a nation, at that time, there are many reasons why we can easily argue the fact that we are in the last of the last days. I always look to Israel as the centerpiece, God's signature, that tells us indeed we are in the final throes of human history. We are at the end of the dispensation of grace. And so these false prophets, you never hear them talking about hell. You never talk, hear them talking about the burning and fire and torment of hell. And so it does not surprise us that there has been little to no change. In fact, the opposite has happened. We have since from that day passed laws that smack right in the face of God's love and justice for us. And so Isaiah goes on to say, For the leaders of this people, verse 16, cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and widows, for everyone is an hypocrite. Have you ever seen such blatant hypocrisy as we are seeing today? Listening to individuals telling us what to do, and yet they do the opposite. The scripture goes on to say, For everyone is a hypocrite and an evildoer, and every mouth speaketh folly. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out. 
For wickedness burneth as the fire, the Lord says. It shall devour the briars and thorns and shall kindle in the thickets of the forest and they shall mount up like the lifting up of smoke. Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts is the land darkened and the people shall be as the fuel. No man shall spare his brother. And so God pronounces such severe judgment upon those who refuse to listen to the voice of God and to repent from their wicked ways. And interestingly enough, in that particular portion of Scripture, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 19, we read once again, Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts is the land darkened, and the people shall be as the fuel of fire. Now listen to this. No man shall spear his brothers. In other words, there will be an internal warring, a civil war, brother against brother, blood being spilt by Brother upon brother. I read just the other day, and it troubled me so much. And to this very moment, it troubles me. For some reason, my heart was gripped with the reality that the prophetic word of God, as it speaks to pending judgment, is indeed just before us. I read of the new incoming Biden administration's policy, they are intending to provide amnesty to a minimum of 11 million up to 20 million and more immigrants. Tell me about day one of the White House and day one through 100, your first 100 days. What are, you, what are your priorities going to be in those first days? Some of it's going to depend on the kind of cooperation I can or cannot get from the United States Congress. But I am going to make a commitment in the first 100 days. I will send a immigration bill to the United States Senate with a pathway to citizenship for over 11 million undocumented people in America. Now, I am not speaking disparagingly against people who seek after and want a better life. But there is an order to that. I see in the near future such a overwhelming of individuals who will, in many respects, be desperate just to survive. That will come over from Mexico in part, over through California and Texas, and will inundate our nation and will at least in part be a cause for rioting. Now we have already seen the severity of brother against brother. We've seen some sad, disheartening demonstrations of violence in our streets. But God says in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 19, No man shall spare his brother. This open border policy could very well be the end of our nation's security. They are talking about halting the building of the walls that if ever there was a time when violence is on the upswing, that there needs to be some definition around this nation built under God it is today. Such horror. These are the last days. Isaiah 26 is another portion of scripture that speaks to us prophetically about these last days. There we read in verse 19, Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body, shall they arise. We are seeing here what I believe to be an Old Testament prophecy of the rapture. 
Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing ye that dwell in the dust for thy dew is as the dew of herbs and the earth shall cast out the dead. Verse 20. So God says, Come my people. Enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Verse 21 for behold, we're talking about the last days. The Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Innocent blood shed through abortion, through murder, through brother against brother. God says, he is going to deal with that in these last days. When I consider such warnings, prophetic warnings, that deal with these last days, it is not difficult for me to envision Jeremiah 16 and Isaiah 9 as being a reference to the United States. Now, in Isaiah 24 is another chapter that is devoted to the end time unfolding of God's wrath, his fiery indignation upon a world that has forsaken him, rejected him, has lifted up their hearts before him arrogantly, stoutly, proudly in his face. And so God says, Behold, verse 1, Isaiah 24, The Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priests, as with the servants, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for the Lord hath spoken this word. Verse 4. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. We are talking about universal judgment. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. Verse 5. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, hath the curse devoured the earth. Notice again the reference to the earth. We're not talking about an isolated portion of the world in some nation. We are talking about worldwide judgments. And again, they changed the ordinances, broken the everlasting covenant. Verse number 7. The new wine mourneth, the vine languisheth, and the merry-hearted do sigh. The merry-hearted, once again, there is that reference to the ceasing of joy and laughter, of merry-heartedness, of the songs that go accompany celebration, of the bride and the groom, and, and the marrying and the given in marriage. The mirth tabret ceaseth, verse 8. The noise of them that rejoice endeth the joy of the harp cease. They shall not drink wine with strong drink. They shall not drink wine with a song. No more parting. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. The city of confusion is broken down. And listen to this verse 10. Every house is shut up. Listen to that. Every house is shut up. We are seeing prophetically a reference to a shutdown. I read an article that was entitled, Anthony Fossey issues Christmas COVID-19 warning. He goes and he begins by saying, we have a problem. We do have a problem. It's a serious problem. And I do believe that there are those who are placing themselves in serious conflict with God. I'm talking about spiritual leaders who refuse to declare the righteous indignation of a holy God, 
against a people who shun all the commandments he gives us for our good. Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. Why? Because our love shows that we trust his love for us. And so Anthony Fossey, what a name for these days. We have a big problem, he said. He said again there, every house is shut up. Isaiah 24, verse 10, it goes on to say, that no man can come in. There is crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. In the city is left desolation, and the gate is smitten with destruction. Once again, we see a reference to the very nature of the judgments of God upon those in the last days. Verse 16 goes on in Isaiah 24. From the uttermost part of the earth have we heard songs, even glory to the righteous. But I said, my lean, my leanness, my leanness, woe unto me, the treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Yea, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit, and he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones so not only do we see the wrath of God upon a treacherous people proud and arrogant who refuse to obey his loving righteous commands but now we see in verse 21 of Isaiah 24 that God shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth. So in other words, we got two different segments. We have those on high. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, Ephesians tells us, chapter 6, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. God says in Isaiah 24 that he's about to punish the host of the high ones. He is about to cast down the very angels that now have their habitat in the heavens. In Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 9, we see there that Satan and his angels are cast down to the earth. And in realizing they are now confined to the earth, the Bible says, Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil is come down, and he knows his time is short, and he has great wrath. It is not hard for me to imagine that Babylon and Revelation is a reference to the United States of America. But whether it is or not, the system of Babylon is worldwide. And God says, His wrath shall be poured upon that system, mystery Babylon. It shall be destroyed in an hour, the world will look and wonder, look what happened to that great city. The, without mixture, it says, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. This is serious stuff. God takes no pleasure in judgment. He did not send his son to the world to the condemn the world, the Bible tells us. 
but rather he sent his son so that through his son we might be saved. He that hath the son hath life. He that hath not the son has not life. So what are you saying, preacher? Are you saying that upon the soil of this land there shall be the spilling of American blood? I believe the Bible prophetically states just that. These are perilous times. These are not times of rejoicing and making merry and everything is wonderful to the contrary and woe unto those false prophets who speak peace when there is no peace saith the Lord we do not know what shall come of this current election there are differing viewpoints some believe that President Trump shall gain another four years in light of what does clearly seem to be exceedingly great fraud. Or it may be that the hypocrisy of it all shall rule in the day. It really doesn't matter whether President Trump continues for four more years or we have a President Biden. The bottom line, we are living in the last days and God is speaking to this world and he is about to shake this world, the very foundation of the world and it shall be moved off of its axis and shall go to and fro like a drunkard. We see in the book of Revelation Mountains and islands being removed as the crust of the earth rotates. The things that are coming upon this world are so heavy that Jesus said men's hearts would fail them for fear of those things which are coming upon the world. I just cannot get excited from a worldly point of view that things are going to get better. What I am excited about is my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. There is more material here that I had hoped to cover, but for the sake of time, we'll conclude right now. But this much I will say, please don't dismiss me as a fear mongerer, as a doom and gloom preacher. I am quoting the word of God and God's love comes by way of warning. He wants us to live with joy and happiness filled with his love looking forward to the return of Jesus first for his bride. We'll be talking in the future about the rapture the snatching away of the church. That is the next event on the prophetic time clock. So, yes, I believe these things are true. I believe that the world is about to face a time of upheaval that was never like it before, nor shall it ever be again. And yet I have joy. I have such joy in my life. Every day I wake up knowing I'm on my way home. I have a home, the city and the builder and maker of which is God. My Lord Jesus has gone to prepare a place for me in John 14. And he said, once he completes that place, he's coming back to get me and all of you who have put their trust in him. Jeremiah said it this way, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in due season, 
and shall not faint when heat cometh, but shall bring forth his fruit, because he is deeply rooted into a bank and a river. There is a river, the scripture says, the streams whereof make glad the city of God. Are you on your way there? I am. My wife is, my family is, my daughter and son-in-law, my children are. Are you? You do not have to be here when this fiery wrath is poured out upon the world. God did not appoint us unto wrath, but unto salvation, he tells us in Thessalonians chapter 4 and 5. If you want to make things right with a thrice holy God, then I invite you to pray with me this prayer. Invite Jesus Christ to come into your heart. Ask God to forgive you of all your sins. Become born again of the Spirit of God. Confess your faults to the Lord from your heart, wherever you are. Acknowledge your sinfulness. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. You're not the only one that has violated the moral standards of a holy God. God is calling you to repent, to turn around, to stop looking to the world for the things that only He can give. Oh God, I would have that I had more time here and I see I'm running out. Like I said, I have joy, such joy. And it's a joy that comes from the Spirit of God in me. And it is the result of the truth of this song that I close with. The stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pine. Till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices for yonder. A new and glorious morn Fall on your knees Oh, hear the angel voices Christmas to you all.